of vocational training, inadequate support with job placement and discrimination, of course. It's estimated that autism uh, affects one out of every 110 children and one in 70 boys, making this the fastest growing developmental disability today. It is more common than childhood cancer, juvenile diabetes and pediatric AIDS combined. Well, Claire Al Allen is the National Education Facilitator at Autism South Africa and she chats to us now. Uh, good afternoon, Claire, and thank you for your time on the PM News Desk. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Let's start. What is autism exactly, and can you demystify the condition for us, Claire? Well, I think in your introduction, you explained it quite mm. clearly. Mm. It's a neurodevelopmental condition, mm. and it affects the way an individual interacts socially with yes. people around them. Um, it affects their verbal and nonverbal communication. So we also like to focus on the nonverbal because a person's understanding of facial expressions and body language, mm. we often take that for granted. Um, it impacts the, what we call the restricted and repetitive behaviors. So being able to cope with change, change in the environment or change in their everyday life. Mm. They, they struggle with things like that. Uh, how do people with autism uh, see the world clear? There must be variances from individual to individual. True. You know, mm. no two people with autism are ever the same. The impact it has on their everyday life is very different from person to person. Mm. So how they view the world is mm. different for them. You know, some people view it as a very confusing, very um, stressful mm. place to be. Um, I think the, the best people to find out how they think is people with autism. Mm. You know, individuals like Ros Blackburn, mm. Temple Grandin, um, Stephen Wilcher, those guys can tell you exactly how the autism affects mm. them. Mm. I see your Light It Up blue t-shirt. Uh, what's the intention behind that campaign and why blue, Claire? Um, well, our campaign, World Autism Awareness Today, mm. is, um, was started eight years ago by the United mm. Nations. Um, as you said, they deemed it to be the fastest growing mm. neurodevelopmental disability. Um, and today is about creating awareness. You know, especially still in South Africa, there is still so much unknown about autism. Mm. Especially in a lot of our rural communities, these individuals are locked away in their homes. They're hidden from the local communities because there's still so much to be learned. They're deemed to be crazy or And a possessed. lot of stigma, I gather, still around the condition. Definitely. A lot of people still think it's a disease. Mm. You know, oh, no, we don't want to catch that. Mm. Mm. It's not a disease. You can't catch it. Um, and it's not the, ch the, the individual is not mentally insane. They're not crazy. They're not possessed. They don't have the demon. Mm. So today is about creating that awareness. All right. There is no known cause for autism, uh, although it's widely believed to have a genetic component. But what are some of the signs one should look for in a young child? In a young child, what we often look for is, let's say, the social interaction. How do they, they interact with their peers? Mm. How do they play with their peers? What do they like with their family? Mm. Then we look for the verbal and the nonverbal communication. Mm. Obviously, a child at three years old who's not talking, that's a big concern for us. Mm. But we, we need to see a, um, a series of, of what we call red flags. So the social interaction, what are they like playing? Their communication mm. skills, what are they like at communicating their needs? Their restricted and repetitive behaviors, what happens to them when things change in their environment? Mm. Let's say, for instance, they go a certain route to school. What happens if you go a different route? Mm. And compare that to a typical child. All right. Uh, uh, Claire, let's talk about the need for making more available autism screening tools in all official South African languages. Most definitely, and the University of KwaZulu-Natal is actually doing that at the moment. Mm. They're taking a lot of the assessment tools, um, the DSM, um, the CARS, all of those, and, cre mm. and translating them into the different um, languages for South Africa mm. because it's very different, difficult when you go to the rural parts. Mm. You know, a doctor there... There isn't an African word for autism. Mm -hmm. So trying to translate it to make it something that they will understand a little bit more so we can have more children assessed. All right. Uh, by my count, currently there are only five government schools right now for children with autism. Uh, clearly more work needs to be done here, Claire. Uh, what can families and communities do in their own homes in the interim? Well, I will tell you that this morning we had a very big announcement from the MEC mm -hmm. for Education mm -hmm. in Gauteng. He's planning a five-year plan for autism provision in Gauteng. Yes. So more units in schools. But obviously, if children are not in the schools, what the families can do is go to the education department, make sure that their children's names are on list, mm. push for schools. But at home, I think just teaching the children to play, giving them a means to communicate. If the child uh, doesn't talk, using pictures to get them to ask for what they want. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the small things that can be done at home.
Uh, thank you, Claire. That was Claire Allen from Autism South Africa joining us right here in studio.